Hello and welcome to another video with me Bioni for Final Fantasy XIV. This time a look at the upcoming Final Fantasy XV crossover event and the information we have so far. This page on the Lodestone has been updated with a full reward details list and much more. After FanFest we get a better idea of what we can expect. The event, now named A Nocturne for Heroes itself, is now confirmed to be time limited, said to be taking place from Tuesday April the 16th, 1 a.m. PDT and lasting until Monday, May the 27th at 7.59 a.m. PDT. The quest to kick this all off starts in Aldar Steps of Nold at X 8.5 Y 9.7 with the NPC Kippy Jackia. The quest for Man in Black will start the event off and is accessible to players level 50 or higher and those who have completed the main scenario quest, the Ultimate Weapon. The rumour mill is spinning, it says, and Kippy Jackia needs the help of an adventurer to uncover the truth for her latest article. At FanFest, it was confirmed that the event rewards themselves will be quite easy to acquire, considering it's a time-limited event and they're going with the familiar crossovers of the past, with quest involvement, a basic fight presumably with Final Fantasy XV's version of Garuda by the looks of it, and then rewards from those quests. Yoshi P stressed then that they will be easy to obtain. So immediately you're not expecting a four-man extreme like Raffalus in this crossover. Never mind, there's plenty of opportunity for that sort of content type to come back in the future, I'm sure. The rewards then include the first four-player mount ever to grace the game, the Regalia Car Mount, which actually looks really cool in game and they have a separate trailer for that I can link in the description. I personally can't wait to get a hold of that. Whether four-player mount will see much use outside of Eureka type content, who knows, it's a cool idea nonetheless. And the other two rewards are Noctis from Final Fantasy XV's outfit. Considering in their crossover, XV got Makote gear, we've ended up with his set. The leather jacket looks cool on both genders, as you can see here, and I imagine this set will be fully dyeable, much like the Cloud and Squall sets before. The last reward is the Noctis hair. This isn't gender locked and is usable on both male and female characters. It's a pretty cool hairstyle and if you want to look like Noctis, this is definitely going to be up your alley. I would have probably liked to see some other rewards in this, perhaps from other characters in 15 in this event, perhaps a Luna Freya dress, but as it stands the rewards are pretty cool. I will make a full event video on this like everything else as soon as the event goes live on April the 16th, so let's get hyped for that crossover. Either way, let me know what you think of the event so far and the rewards in particular they've announced, and I'll see you all next time.